All right, nerds. So basically, today we're going to look at what are common everyday uses of indicators. Where would we use these, you know, frequently in our lives, or not in our lives necessarily, but in society. So you want to be able to explain three common uses of indicators um, for pH testing, especially soil testing. If you only get one, that's the one to get, but you really do need three. All right. So soil testing. Well, we test pH because some soil, some plants only grow in fairly narrow ranges of pH. Therefore, we need the soil to be what it is. Another reason for testing soil, which you should write this down, is that it's a good way of knowing if the soil is being polluted. If there's a sharp pH change, you can tell that something is running off into the soil. Basically, there are several ways to do it. The most common way is use a neutral white powder, which is barium sulfate, and this is sprinkled over the damp soil. Okay, so we then put a few drops of indicator and it will change color, obviously, according to the pH of the soil. Why the white powder? We use the white powder so that we can see the color change, basically, because if you do it on soil, it's too dark. It just, everything looks brown. Now, there are other methods. For example, this is our white powder, so we, we drop the white powder down here, we put, sprinkle the soil up, because it's neutral, it absorbs, um, or, you know, it absorbs the, the excess hydrogen ions inside, so in the soil, because it's, it's damp, so it's going to be in solution. It needs to be damp, you can't do it dry. Um, you can put some water in this uh, wet pH, uh, pH test, so you, you put the, salt, the soil in the bottom, and then you fill it up with water, you put in some, um, some, you put some pH, um, universal indicator in there, give it a bit of a shake, and we use this to tell what colour the soil is. And this one here, you can see that it's fairly acidic. Uh, you can't see right through there, there's actually a white background on the back there. This is a pH meter for the soil. You literally jam it in the soil. Done. And that does it with electrochemistry. So, pool testing. This, by the way, this is the range you want your pool in. So it's a little bit basic, but still pretty close to neutral. Um, pool water, it needs to be near neutral, otherwise it causes too much drama. And you've seen this when you go swimming and you know your eyes start to hurt because there's too much um, chlorine in the water. So you need to keep it fairly neutral. Now, we use a few drops of indicator inside a sample of the pool water, or we can use... Um, pH paper, or we can use a pH meter. There's several different ways, so let's have a look. So this is the sort of pH paper you would use. It's not just pH paper, obviously, because it's got the pH end and the free chlorine ends. So they're the ones we're going to talk about. Um, and here is your sample. You mix it in, and you can see you've got the, the samples of acid built in here. Um, and here you can see if it's, if it's too far on this side, you add chlorine. Uh, it's too far on this side, you add soda ash, and this gets us down to the neutral area. So yeah, you put your water sample in, then you put your universal indicator in, and away we go. Effluent testing. Now, effluent testing is actually really important. So we, we can use acidity to measure how certain types of industry are disposing of their wastes. And if it's being dumped into the water, well, it'll change the pH of the water. Now... Industry technicians, as well as government officials, so it's, it's very important for, so that's the EPA, they will monitor the pH of water and natural waterways. And if they find that the pH is off, well, I mean, it has a massive effect on local wildlife, particularly frogs and fish. So they, if they find it's off, they'll then investigate who is, you know, who has their runoff go into the, the local waterway and, you know, see what it is that they're dumping. Basically... The, we just use indicators to measure it. Um, if the pH is too high or too low, we can add stuff to either the effluent or the waterway to neutralize it. All right, because remember, we want our water to be fairly neutral. So that's it. That's actually a fairly short one today. Um, and we'll see you in class.